South China Morning Post, 27th of February 2023, bans on foreign house ownership in the US and Canada harm local economies and immigrants. China has been investing in real estate globally as part of its efforts to launder money. According to estimates, corrupt CCP officials must spend and launder nearly $2 trillion by 2022. The renewed escalation of tensions between Washington and Beijing could not have happened at a worse moment for Asian Americans living in Texas. Republican Governor Greg Abbott has promised to sign a bill prohibiting people and businesses from China, Iran, North Korea, and Russia from purchasing real estate in Texas and nationalizing what has already been bought. Last December, Abbott banned using the Chinese video platform TikTok on devices issued by the government out of concern that China's government might access consumer data. The draft legislation, which Republican State Senator Lois Kolkhorst supports, was created in response to worries regarding recent land acquisitions by Chinese firms, several of which were made close to U.S. military installations. The measure, known as SB 147, would even prohibit permanent residents, or holders of green cards, from purchasing a home in its current form. Florida and other states are also considering new laws limiting foreign farmland and real estate ownership. Even though less than 1% of foreign-owned U.S. agricultural and non-agricultural land is owned by Chinese investors, and they only accounted for 6% of foreign purchases of residential real estate last year, down from 16% in 2015, U.S. politicians, particularly Republicans, are scrambling to sound antagonistic toward China. Asian Americans have been incensed, particularly in Texas. The plan, anticipated to be discussed in the spring, would still make it impossible for more recent immigrants to purchase real estate, despite Colcourse's assurance that she would amend the bill to ensure that the provisions do not apply to U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. The legislation has already had a chilling effect by bringing to mind racist and discriminatory laws that once forbade undesirable immigrants from establishing themselves in America and owning land. Leaders in the business and community of Texas have also criticized it because they are concerned about the state's capacity to draw top talent, especially Austin, which has developed into a hub for technology. A broker at Houston Elite Properties who works with Asian American purchasers, Kevin Yu, said that most of his clients were younger Chinese immigrants, making up about half of his clientele. The Chinese are not significant market participants in Houston. However, you said there is a genuine worry that they will never achieve the American ideal. Contra Riley, restrictions on foreign purchases of domestic real estate in Canada are justified due to issues with housing affordability. According to an annual poll conducted by Demographia, Vancouver and Toronto have placed among the most expensive housing markets in the world for the past 10 years. Politicians have seized on exaggerated reports of foreign investors, particularly Chinese buyers, paying above average rates to park their money in a haven, even though several other factors, including low interest rates, immigration, supply restrictions, and a failure to target the sources of speculative demand effectively, are also at play. The imposition of provincial taxes on non-resident buyers was influenced by intense speculating about the origin and effects of foreign purchases of Canadian homes. A report by the National Bank of Canada in March 2016 estimated that Chinese investors accounted for a third of foreign investments in Vancouver and 14% in Toronto in 2015. In response to the ongoing rise in Canadian home values, which had risen a staggering 50% since the eruption of the COVID-19 pandemic, the federal government went a step further in April of last year. It imposed a two-year nationwide prohibition on most foreigners purchasing residential properties. The ban, which went into force at the beginning of this year, has generated more questions than it has addressed. It first avoids addressing the fundamental issues plaguing Canada's property market. While non-residents only possessed 4.2% of homes in Vancouver and 2.7% in Toronto in 2020, Statistics Canada data reveals that individual property owners held between 30 and 40% of the housing stock in Canada's major markets, highlighting domestic investors' roles played in driving up home prices. Second, the government has put the commercial market in peril by focusing on foreign demand in the residential market. The regulations could impact retail and office projects if they are located on land that allows residential use because they define residential real estate as any land zone for residential or mixed use. The regulations also classify any non-Canadian company or entity with a degree of foreign ownership as low as 3%, including many Canadian businesses with foreign shareholders, even if they hold a minor stake. The ban impacts companies that perceive themselves to be Canadian, according to Esme Craig a partner in Denton's real estate group in Toronto. 
Even though the government has stated the ban does not extend to commercial property, it is still true that placing too much emphasis on foreign purchases of Canadian homes has resulted in unnecessary collateral harm. Suppose states' attempts to forbid foreign real estate purchases on national security grounds are effective. In that case, the Chinese bogeyman will greatly damage the U.S. real estate market. Efforts to limit foreign purchases are a diversion. They may pose a severe threat to local economies when housing markets worldwide face significant challenges, including the rise in mortgage rates and the acute scarcity of affordable homes.